Hey everybody, it's me, your boy. Welcome back. Pretty recently we picked up the sapling saga, and you know how it is, you know. It, it went well. We're doing really good. We have every single type of sapling now, which is definitely a flex, for sure. But you know what isn't a flex? No tree farm. Netherite armor is cool and all. Villagers are great too, but what does it all matter if you don't have a tree farm? Yep, it doesn't matter at all. Until now. Tree farm. In today's episode, we'll be expanding the base over here by adding a tree farm to it. This tree farm is going to collect saplings automatically for us. It's going to be great. If you like the guide or if you're just hyped for life in general, uh, then smash like. So, materials. For this tree farm, we're going to need building blocks. We're going to need a little bit of dirt. Not too much, but like a little bit. Water buckets, a hopper, hopefully just one. We're going to try and keep it at one. A chest, trap doors, technically optional. And then also optional, fence gates and ice. Maybe. Depending on how you want to do it. There is one more thing though. Space. We need space. So this tree farm is actually going to be a little bit of a two-in-one. I'm planning on an area where we can plant trees and then they grow. I chop them down and then the saplings get picked up. Then around that area, maybe like on the outside or something wrapping around it, uh, we have an area where we can just mass plant a bunch of trees, like a bunch of oak trees. I don't really want oak saplings, maybe even spruce trees. No offense, they're beautiful. But like, you know, grow a bunch of trees that I already have saplings for, I don't really need. Also, grow them in bigger quantity. Sapling collection in the middle, big ring space on the outside. Uh, it's going to take a lot of space. This might actually be one of our biggest farms in terms of like land area, which means expand. Uh, so I looked around uh, before the episode. I think this is our best candidate over here. Like, There's a lot of room over here. All we have to do is chop up the trees, level the land a little bit, and we could easily fit like a big, large-scale tree farm in this spot. So anyways, <sighs> ah, tree choppels. This has been so long since I've seen you. Welcome back. I like plants. I, I really do. And by extension, trees. Technically, it does count as a plant. I like trees too, but they just always seem to be in the way. I need to take out a big area of this forest right at the beginning here to actually have room for the tree farm. <laughs> Which is kind of funny. Uh, take out the trees so I can grow more trees. Uh-huh. That is the plan. Okay, so I'm not actually like 100% sure where I want to position this farm. It's going to be pretty big. I think it's like 17 by 17, and that's just the sapling collection area. So maybe we put like... I don't know, like the front corner in like this general area right here. So I take all the trees that way, take all the trees that way. All right, while I have the other meat chopped down trees, I wanted to show you something. Take a look at this path over here. Does it look a little bit different to you? Uh, because yes, it definitely should. I actually finally finished it. Hold on, hold on. Look at it. I finally actually finished it. So I finished this path. I did a little bit of work in this world, and I have been doing a little bit of work in this world. In the Wednesdays with Waddle series. It's a series where I take a look at the subreddit, respond to comments, look at Instagram. If you haven't watched those episodes, a card on screen right now, check it out. Give it a shot. I think you'll like it. So anyways, the other me finished chopping out the trees. It looks so much more open, so much more clear. Super flat too. I also found these things. <laughs> um, I don't know if I was like saving a wolf at some point or, or, or saving a cow or something, but I found a boat in, in the forest right here with these things in it. <laughs> does anybody know what this is for? Like, does anyone remember? When did I do this? Also, there's this big hill here. It's kind of in the way. I think I'm going to have to dig that thing out too. Uh, it's going to be a lot of digging for sure, but I was thinking maybe the farm goes over to like this spot right here, which means all of this hill needs to go away. I can't decide if I should like smooth it out or just leave it really steep. I'm not too sure. But I didn't do any of it. Tree farm. This design is actually pretty simple, and it can actually be as big or as small as you want. The point of this specific farm isn't automatic collection, it's saplings. All about saplings. If you're growing trees, and then you have to do other things at the same time, but you don't want to lose the saplings, maybe you just don't have a lot of saplings, this is the design. I mean, I'm a busy guy. What can I say? I plant a tree, I chop it down, that's the easy part. Then the sapling. Uh, yeah, I always forget. Until today. So what we're going to do is pick a front corner of the farm. I already picked it. It's going to be right there. Then we're going to go to the back side and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is going to be 9 right there. That's going to be the middle. Then we're going to go 8 more. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And the back. Oh my gosh, that worked out perfect. All right, so we have a section of 8 right here. That's 9. And then we have two end blocks right there. We're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to make this a perfect square. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Today's episode is actually counting with waddles, by the way, if you didn't know. Uh, so yeah, w welcome. I, I hope you enjoy it. I think that was 8. No, it was 7. It was 7. It was actually 7. <laughs> counting and donking about like something else at the same time. Uh, top 10. Hardest thing to do of, of the entire history of humanity. I did it perfect. I did it perfect. See, really, it's an acquired tray, but once you get it down, you could probably easily get into, like, top 10 best schools in the entire country. It's pretty sweet. Mind-blowing counting skills aside, check it out. It's a square. There we go. That's the start of the farm. 
in a few minutes we're going to basically flood this farm with water have it all flow to the middle have water flowing at the back towards the front and have a pickup chest so we can get all the saplings but before we do that we need to talk about where we're actually going to grow the trees so what we're going to do from this corner is go one two three four five and then on that fifth one place a block and do this two by two growing area now it's kind of up to you if you want to farm like singular trees inside of this thing maybe oak trees or birch trees or something you don't need these two by two spots i'm planning on using this thing for like dark oak trees that's the biggest one like the biggest one that i always need more saplings of and i seem to always run out of so dark oak trees is the plan which means two by two spots that'll be perfect by counting in five blocks from the corner that should give us enough room so that all of the saplings fall inside of this thing if it doesn't if we were finding losses we could move things in a little bit more but honestly this should pick up like i would think like 90 percent of the saplings wait 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 hold on something's off so two oh no one two oh no i had it right the first time i second guessed myself oh this is awkward real awkward i was just flexing my counting skills uh huh really it's no big deal a couple minor adjustments and here we go we have four growing areas and really actually you can place these growing spots however you want inside of this thing they don't have to actually be like evenly placed but we're going for symmetry here so that's what we're going to leave it as i think four trees at a time is pretty good but if it wasn't good enough expand you can make this thing as big as you want you could have it keep going and going and going and going as far as you can see uh, i'll talk about expanding it later though next we need trap doors and hey my tree grew uh, look at it. It's so tall. It's it's so cool. It's a custom tree right there. State-of-the-art stuff. So you know how it is around here. Spruce trap doors, spruce wood in general, by far the best type of wood in the entire game. Maybe dark oak logs are pretty good, but spruce. Nothing compares. So uh, you could have used any type of trap door for this. It doesn't make a difference at all. We're going to use spruce. I'm going to place a line of blocks like that, and then I'm going to place trap doors so I can open them all like that. The trap doors are actually pretty thin when we close them, which is good. If we left solid blocks right here, we would have saplings fall on it, and they wouldn't fall into the water. Uh, in the long run, it wouldn't be that big of a deal because eventually you'll start stocking up on saplings a lot. But in the short term, it could be a problem. The sad part is it's not perfect. We definitely could end up with a sapling landing on the trap doors, kind of like the dirt block right there. But it is what it is. Trap doors are really the easiest and cheapest way to do this. You could also use things like glass panes, but glass panes will always stay thin. Uh, so if you want like a wider walking area so you can get over to the trees, trap doors is the way to go. I like the idea of wider walking, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to do even more going back to the back platform. Symmetry. Symmetry is king today. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Trap doors right there. I'm going to need a little bit more, but we'll have even more trap doors going to the back. So after I finish placing all the trap doors, get rid of the temporary blocks, we end up with something like this. Now we can easily walk over to this spot, chop this tree down, walk over to this spot, chop this tree down. We could do even more going to the back. It's totally up to you. But the more trap doors that you place, the more likely it's going to be that something ends up landing on the trap door and not getting picked up. For me, this is pretty much perfect. We're good to go. Now it's time to dig. We're going to need to put water inside of this thing, which means we need a little bit of space. To make this space, we're going to dig one block down, but I care about aesthetics, so... We're going to dig two blocks down and replace the floor with something else. And actually, we're going to end up digging even deeper in the middle, and I'm going to take out the sides too. I'm going to make this thing look so good. This is going to be by far the best looking tree farm in the world. There's only one other tree farm, and I don't really like it. Yeah, funny thing, so that circle tree farm that I built over at the jungle base... I don't know. I, I like the vision with the different circles and the different layers. I built something kind of like it in the hardcore world for crop farms. The crop farm one, I think, is a lot better. I never really liked the circular tree farm in the jungle, though. I don't know. Like, it's not the terracotta, I promise. I like the patterns. It's just, I don't know. Something about it. Also, while I guess we're saying negative statements today, I have a big problem. Uh, certified lover boy. Uh, TSU. Not around. Oh, no. <laughs> oh no it's relentless it's, it's relentless really drake how could he do it this song has been stuck in my head non-stop like looping like like literally looping for i don't know like three days now it's really bad i mean that's a good song how do you get a song stuck out of your head if anybody has any advice uh please help i can't it's stuck in my head it's so catchy and it loops perfectly too i need help so I've got big plans for this farm. I want this thing to look really, really good. I was thinking about using spruce wood because I'm actually like stocked up on this stuff. I have stacks and stacks, but instead of spruce wood, I think dark oak wood in here will actually accent this a little bit better and make it look more cool. In the middle, I'm gonna have spruce logs going straight down. It's just a little design thing. Doesn't really matter how you do it. I think it's gonna end up looking pretty nice. Spruce logs and dark oak planks, I think it's the perfect combination. I think it looks really good. There's one more block that fits into this perfectly though. That's right, deeps, it would. It, it actually would work really, really well here, but I've been banned from deep slate again. So instead of deep slate, we're going to use stone bricks. But actually, almost forgot. Instead of stone bricks everywhere, there is one more thing that we could do. It's simple, but genius, really. Honestly, cut the blocks in half. Use half as many blocks. 
You know what's kind of funny? I was thinking about it the other day, and honestly, since the addition of Deep Slate, this game has not been the same to me. Every single build that I do, I, like, I'm serious. When I'm thinking about the builds and what I'm going to do next, and, you know, the block palette that I'm going to use, Deep Slate is literally the first thing that comes to mind. My mind literally goes, okay, so I could use Deep Slate and maybe, like, Spruce Wood and, and like, Oak Logs. That could look good or, or something, and then I realized Deep Slate. At this point, I've used Deep Slate on the past, like, 17 builds. I'm sorry about that. Actually, I'm not sorry about that at all. I take it back. I love the block. It's like the best thing ever. You know what, though? It has been a long time since we've seen our old friend. Really long time. Mossy Stone Bricks. Uh, we need a vine farm. Really bad. Also, if you're redoing the floor in this thing, making it look a little bit nicer like I am, uh, don't fill in the middle. We're actually going to dig down in the middle in just a second, so don't even bother. If you ended up redoing the floor, making it look better like I did right here, look at this thing. The combo, perfect, like I said. Uh, then, after you redo the floor, dig out the middle. The middle trench going straight down this thing should be one block lower. We're going to replace the floor in a second and make it look good. But after you dig out the floor in the middle, make it lower, pick a front side. Uh, for me, I'm definitely going to pick this side as the front. It's closer to everything. So what we're going to do is actually dig down in here. Uh, what we want to do here is find the floor. So that's going to be right there. And we're going to put a chest on the outside of this thing. So right there. Then we're going to move back around to the inside of this thing and put a hopper going into the chest. The hopper is going to pick up all of the saplings. If you're setting up a tree farm that's going to pick up the saplings for you, there's a couple different ways to actually pick up those saplings. Things like minecarts would work, but water, in my opinion, is even better. So what we're going to do, if our measurements are right, which, yes, yes, that's perfect, we're going to put water on either side of this farm, the left and the right side, all the way along the wall, kind of like that, so the water flows to the middle. That way, when something falls into it, like a bucket, it will go all the way to the middle, which is perfect. Water is great for picking up saplings. It's really, really cheap, and it's efficient too, but it does have its flaws. There are a couple flaws that you're going to notice with this farm if you set it up. Sometimes saplings can land on these blocks right here. No really good way around that one. And then same thing. Uh, saplings could land on the trap doors even when they're closed like that. So you will have a little bit of sapling loss going on. If you're looking for completely zero sapling loss, like not even one sapling at all, uh, then I would honestly just advise using minecarts. Hopper minecarts uh, running underneath wherever you're growing your trees and farming them. That will pick up every single sapling. It's just a little bit more expensive and way more noisy. Water on both sides going to the middle. That's pretty simple. Water at the back right here is going to go forward this way. However, it's actually going to end up stopping. Like, even if I had this block filled in, it just stops there. Water only goes eight blocks, but there's an easy fix. Well, actually, there are a couple easy fixes. My favorite one is going to be this right here. We put packed ice right there or any kind of ice. Uh, then we're going to put a fence gate right there, open the fence gate, and grab more water. Put water on the other side of the fence gate, and we're good. So test run right here. We throw a stone brick. It goes down into that stream. It goes down there. It gets pushed that way, and it should be in the chest. It all happens, like, so quickly, too, which is amazing. But chest? Mm-hmm. Stone brick slab. So what I want to do in here to make this look a little bit better is put a trap door right there, open the trap door, so then saplings and things will actually still go into the chest, uh, but it's closed from the outside. Another thing that might be a good idea to have inside of this farm is an exit, just in case. I mean, you never know. I'm going to put a ladder right there, so if I end up falling into the water, I can easily just swim over to it and, you know, like, get out of the farm. I'll put one ladder on that side, and I'll actually come over to the exact center on this side and put a ladder there, too. That's basically it. That's basically the entire sapling collecting tree farm. It's pretty simple. Now it's time to set it up for a test run. So I want to grow a giant jungle tree. I'd like to grow two dark oak trees and then one giant spruce tree too. We'll go dark oak back here. Uh, maybe we'll go jungle right there. Spruce right here. And then finally, dark oak right there. Doesn't really matter though. That's good. And so, it's digging time. It's time to start digging out even more space. I've thought about this hill a lot. I think I know exactly what I want to do. Uh, I'm going to dig this hill out, and I think I'm just going to cut it out. It's going to be, like, really, really steep. We'll work with the wall, try and decorate it, make it look really good. Of course, of course, I'll come in here with the shears and, and collect all the ferns. Could never lose a fern. Sweet berries I don't really care about, but I'll take them and I'll move them. We'll cut this hill out and make it, like, a steep wall all the way back to... Honestly, like this layer right here, there's going to be a lot of digging. Like, I'm going to get a lot of blocks while I do this, but it'll be worth it. Design-wise, I might make a few modifications to the farm. I'm thinking maybe, like, fences around the side that could look really cool. But on the outside of the farm, for sure, this land, it definitely needs to get raised up. I think what I'm going to do is raise the land up all the way to this spot right here. Like, basically create a natural curve through there. Um... And then curve it back over to that land. So all of this gets raised up. And then over here around the farm, this gets lowered. I'm thinking the tree farm growing area, like for the random trees, will go all the way back to here. And look at that. That's tall. But anyways, random tree growing spot probably goes back to like this spot right here. So I'll take the land out a little bit. And then over here on this side, the land has to lower too. I want this farm definitely to stick up like out of the ground by one block. So that gets lower too. And I'll lower the land all the way back to... I think like this spot. This spot should probably be good. Circles are great. I love them. Quite possibly the best looking shape of all time. Like, honestly. Initially, I was thinking about making this farm like a circle around the center square. 
But now I'm thinking square. I think a square will be fun. However, however, it's street time. Take a look at this. So really quick demo. Uh, I'm going to actually collect some of these vines. We'll just shear those and let those fall into the water. And I'm going to go for the dark oak tree. Anything that lands on these blocks, we're going to have to manually collect ourselves. But we work our way over to the tree and then you chop the tree down. However you like to chop it down. You go straight up, you do a spiral, whatever you do, chop the tree out. Definitely, there are ways to make fully automatic tree farms. They're nice and all. They're really cool too. Uh, but they require a lot of TNT. Something that I don't have a lot of right now. And honestly, I don't mind chopping down trees sometimes. Like, it's kind of nice. So anyways, take out the tree all the way. Make sure there is no wood in the thing. And then close the trap doors when you leave the thing leave the trap doors like that so the saplings don't fall in the trap doors as much hopefully most of the saplings will end up falling into the water and then check the chest look at that we already have one that's sweet oh i take it back i i take it back just like that we have three saplings oh that's amazing that's awesome so that's how that works we're never gonna run out of saplings we'll have saplings for all of these tree types forever i should have built this thing way sooner i don't need to worry about running out of dark oak saplings anymore basically uh i have to use it a little bit but i don't have to worry progress 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 i've been busy i've been working on the farm a lot and check it out this is what we're looking at now so over here on this wall i terraformed it i made it look a little bit better i put different types of stone in there there's cobblestone andesite normal stone and a little bit of coal that was actually naturally there i thought that looked pretty nice i mixed a little bit of coarse dirt in here too i still need to work on this portion of the wall but i feel like that's looking pretty good i found copper over here i keep forgetting to get my so touch pickaxe uh or fortune one of them fences in the middle oak trap doors on the top i think this actually like pretty much finishes up this farm like meaning i feel like it actually makes the whole farm feel finished but uh, i just thought of this mm, that's gonna be interesting i guess that works like that so there is still a little bit of work that needs to get done on this farm but check this out i've been using this thing a little bit harvesting mainly dark oak trees 20 dark oak saplings starting from zero right there or i guess like eight I'm biased, but it's great, really. I love it. I've been eating something like this set up in the world for so long. Also, check it out. I picked up a ton of sticks, some apples, and extra wood, too. That's cool. So I'm in the detailing phase of this build right now, trying to just get more things in here. I set up this simple little walkway, connected it up to the path right there, and then added some bushes in there. Now the wall of this thing. The plan is to definitely still try and keep mobs out. Uh, I've been thinking about it, trying to figure out what I want to do. I like what I did over here with the fences curving up and then the posts in the middle. So I want to try and do something like that over here. Only problem is I haven't used any of that oak tone at all, and I feel like it might actually end up looking a little bit random. So I'm going to slightly modify it. I'm thinking maybe... Maybe we do like oak logs this time and then we do spruce fences and we space them out a little bit more because it's a bigger area. And yeah, uh, basically do something like this and then whenever I have the hill, maybe just run it into the hill like that and then kind of end it there. I mean, I know technically mobs could like walk right in here, but then again, they could just jump off and land in here anyways. So I feel like that's a nice way to do it. Look at this. <laughs> I have so much wood already. Uh, so much dark oak logs. Like I said, I've been harvesting those things. A little bit of oak logs. I planted oak trees in the area around the farm. Which, oh yeah, by the way, uh, the area around the farm. So how am I going to use it? Well, basically like this. I take saplings and you just throw them down wherever. Space them out uh, or crunch them together, whatever I'm trying to do. I let whatever I plant grow manually or I speed it up with bone meal. Doesn't really matter. And then I come back later and chop them down. By the way, on this thing to finish it off, spruce trap door. I think that looks pretty nice. The other cool thing about having all this extra space here, this right here. If I ever need leaves, I'm basically set now. I can grow a bunch of whatever leaf type that I'm looking for, come over here, and just shear them, harvest them. In any long-term world, any world in general, tree farms are honestly like such a must-have. I can't believe that it took me so long to set up something like this, but I'm happy. I'm glad that I finally did a look at this thing. It's already ready to go again. So there are actually a couple things that you could do to make this thing even better. The first thing is better axe than what I have. Right now, I have an unenchanted iron axe that keeps breaking. Yeah, that's definitely not the best axe. If you could get like an enchanted netherite axe efficiency, uh, then yeah, that's going to be great. To buff it even more, put a beacon nearby and put haste on it. I don't think you can insta mine wood, but you could definitely speed it up even more, which is great. That'll be a little bit of a long-term goal for us. Eventually, we will definitely move towards having that over here. That'll be great. I, I really like the idea of having that. That is something that we had over at the jungle, and it was nice. Expand. Definitely. Absolutely. You could make this thing bigger. 100%. If you wanted to, uh, you could actually add extra layers. So water flows eight blocks. What I would recommend doing is uh, bumping things up, doing another layer of like uh, water, or you could do ice in the middle. It's really up to you, but bump things up, expand it outwards. You could definitely do that over and over and over again. It might get a little bit more tricky with the water the further you go, but you could figure it out. And a uh, con of this farm. So I, I noticed something, look at this. If something lands perfectly in the middle, 
Uh, it can get stuck on the ice right there. So I could work around that by just bumping the water down and having one continuous stream. To be honest, this time around, I'm not completely fixated on zero losses whatsoever. If I lose a few things in the middle, I think it should be fine. If I end up finding out that I am losing more than just a few things in the middle, uh, then I'll come back and modify the design. But really, from what I've been using this thing so far, it seems fine. I don't think it's really going to be a problem at all. But the nice thing about this design is you could totally modify it and set it up in a way that you will have zero losses whatsoever. If we're talking zero losses, cut out all of these trap doors. I don't know how you're actually going to get back and forth. Maybe you just place temporary blocks, take them out, uh, something like that. You could definitely do that. And then actually, you could raise this thing up a little bit higher. It's not going to affect anything at all. If you raise it up higher, hopper minecarts go right below the thing and it will pick up all of the things that land on the blocks of the trees growing after you chop the trees down. Is it necessary? No way. I think you're kind of crazy if you're going to do that. Like with peace and love and, and kindness, uh, I don't think it's really that important. Like a couple losses are fine. They're just saplings after all. But I mean, hey, uh, if you want zero losses at all, then that's what you could do. Hopper minecarts underneath every single growing area. It gets way more expensive for sure. Like a lot more expensive very, very fast. But I mean, like I said, if you want zero losses, that's how you do it. A perimeter. Perimeters are a really, really good thing to have. That's basically like a wall or some kind of border that's going to keep mobs outside of the thing. It would be really, really sad if you were like climbing the tree and then a creeper walked up and, and exploded. So maybe set up a wall, a barrier, something like that. Or just light up the whole area around the farm. Lighting up the whole area around the farm would be probably a smarter idea than this. It is definitely more effective at cutting out spawns. I think torches all over the place are ugly. I don't really like it. So I'd rather just build a fence and hope the fence works and try and be careful. I'm sure there are other ways that you can make this farm even better. And if you can think of one of those ways, throw it down in the comments. But off the top of my head, I think that's basically it. Like those are most of the things, the modifications, changes that you can make to this thing to, to make it better. Uh, so let's see, we have the back corner right there. Hmm. Hmm, you know that kind of works out. We'll just turn it right there. That's fine. I mean, I know it's not the same as that corner, but it doesn't really matter. Also, I don't like torches. I, I really don't, but I think I will actually go on the outside of the farm and put torches. I know it's going to be dark in the middle. That's fine. I could deal with it. But if I could put torches on the outside to try and like, you know, start lighting up this area, I think that would be a nice idea. I also decided to add a composter over here in case I need to compost saplings. I, I am definitely going to start stocking up on a lot of saplings, especially spruce, pretty quickly here. And the composter is our guy. Our composter can actually hook us up and get rid of all of those things for us. With the fence in here, it does kind of end up being a little bit more cramped than I had hoped. So I think what I'll end up doing is probably grow a lot of the extra, like, different types of trees, like oak and birch and things like that on this side, and maybe on that side by the wall too. The other nice part about having all this extra space is if I need to grow a lot of, like, big type of trees, like maybe I need a ton of spruce wood. Now I have all of this space actually carved out for this and I could grow just a ton of spruce trees in here. I won't get the saplings, but I don't think I'm going to need very many more spruce saplings. I'm kind of set. Like I have a little bit more than a stack over here. And then I think like four more in the base. Finally, I have considered trying to do something with the land over here, maybe like mixing in coarse dirt or something, just doing something to make it look less like flat and plain. But at the same time, I don't think it's worth it. I also considered setting up something like this, like individual planting spots, like carved out. So I put a sapling on top of that. But also, I don't think it's worth it. Having a big flat open spot like this is going to give me so much more freedom. I could clump a bunch of oak saplings together if I wanted to, just grow a giant chunk of oak trees, and then come in here and chop it down. Yeah, you see what I mean? Four stacks of spruce saplings over here already, and actually, look at that. A solid stack of oak saplings too. Some saplings I, I really don't need any more of. So that's it. That's the tree farm build. Now today is actually a very significant day. This is the, oh wait, no, 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 no. That's right, we decided it's not today. New book on episode 160. For today, episode 157, we will keep using the same book. Episode 157. So uh, for this episode, there was actually two different comments that I wanted to pick. Uh, I'm gonna talk about them both, but I'm putting this one in the book. If you ever need to find the flower forest again after a respawn, may I suggest placing a sign to point in the direction? Maybe light it up with glowstones to identify it. Haha, <laughs> funny thing, you read my mind. Uh, more on that next episode. The other comment was from Eric H. It was basically about the zombie villager situation and how they won't despawn if they pick up something from the ground, which is definitely true. If a zombie villager or a zombie picks up something from the ground and it doesn't burn up somehow, it actually won't despawn, which means if I found a zombie somewhere and let's say, I don't know, like I left something on the ground in the cave and it, and it picked it up like a piece of cobblestone then that zombie would just be living down in the cave as long as the zombie isn't taken out by me or something else for whatever reason it will live forever if it has something i thought it was a really good point something i completely forgot to mention in the villager episode so 
glowberry update. Uh, craziest thing happened. A glowberry grew. On, I think it was that one right there, that specific vine, which means it worked. Uh, chopping all the vines down, uh, letting them grow again. Now glowberries can actually regrow. I, I'm pretty sure it was on that one. I had to give it time and see. I shouldn't have harvested it. I harvested it and put it inside of the chest over here. But yeah, I'm pretty sure, like 95% sure it was that one right there. Anyways, that's going to do it for Minecraft Guide episode 157. The tree farm, with an area finally carved out inside of the base for actually growing trees, like a dedicated spot, is going to be so much easier to work on future builds. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, it really helps out, and if you're new here, subscribe. There's a brand new video every single day. Actually coming up on the three year anniversary of Daily Uploads, I haven't missed a single day, which is crazy. It hasn't exactly been easy, but soon. Big thank you to my patrons, Michael A., Tanner B., and Fateful Grimoire. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Goodbye.